Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's me coming back at you again with another vid. You know, I'm hearing all this talk about Gennady Golovkin being the most feared and avoided fighter in the middleweight division, which is true. No denying that. But it also gave me a recollection of one particular fighter. Now, this fighter, as you can see on the screen right here, was a reigning middleweight champion. He struck fear in division with a, uh, an unbelievable knockout streak of 15. And he was incredibly big for middleweight, had long reach and uh, a very good jab and a very good footwork. And his name was Gerald McClellan, the G-Man. Now, a lot of you hardcore boxing fans do remember Joe Mc Gerald McClellan. Uh, for the casuals or those who haven't really uh, watched boxing, you know, who hasn't really paid attention to the sport until now or more recently, I should say, then sit back and I'm going to give you guys a little uh, history rundown overview of Gerald McClellan. Okay. Now, Gerald McClellan is perhaps one of the most un probably one of the most forgotten fighters or forgotten world champions of our time. And the reason why I say that is because, yes, he was not a big name fighter. He was not a cash cow, as you will call it. And the reason why he was not put in that position, because you had a lot of top fighters, the top cash cow middleweights like Roy Jones Jr., for example, uh, who avoided him um, by going up in weight at 168 when Roy Jones himself was not a big 168 fighter. But he decided to go up in weight to avoid McClellan. Um, the same thing goes for James Tony. Now, I'm not saying that James Tony had moved up a weight potentially just to uh, avoid McClellan. But from what I've heard and from what I've read, I heard the urban legend that um, Tony had moved up in weight just not to, you know, just so that way he doesn't have to fight McClellan professionally. Now, they've had heated sparring wars at the Crunk Gym back in the 90s. Okay. In fact, there is a, a tape on YouTube right now where you can take a look at that sparring session. It took place in 1990, I believe, where uh, McClellan gave Tony all he can handle in that sparring session. I mean, that, that, that sparring session was so heated to the point it almost looked like it was a professional fight. So, I mean, it was a great sparring session. You know, you could, you could argue either way that Tony got the best of McClellan in that sparring session. But I think McClellan got the best of Tony because he controlled the ring. He got, he had the ring work and he was backing Tony up. And that's something that's that anybody could do to Tony. That's very rare. He was backing Tony up in that sparring session. So, um, you take a look at it when you ever, you know, whenever you get a chance. Now, McClellan, um, surprisingly had two, you know, two, um, uh, unanimous decision losses to, uh, guys like, uh, Ralph Ford and Dennis Milton. So, um, again, he didn't get knocked out in those fights. He just lost on, you know, razor thin split decisions and whatnot. Um, anyhow, um, after the Ward fight, you know, he had on, he went on a, um, a six, uh, KL winning streak. Okay. Well, actually, no, before the Ward fight, well, after the Ward fight, he went on a 6K on Winning Street. He had two, uh, you know, he had two decisions. And after that, he went on a, another K on Winning Streak of five. All right. Now, that fifth K on Winning, at that fifth K on win, win Streak that he had was against Sammy Brooks. Um, and after he knocked out Sammy Brooks, he got a world title shot against uh, John Mugabe, which is the WBO title. Now, when he fought Mugabe, he got him out in the first round. He knocked him out badly. Now, a lot of people argue, well, that Mugabe was already past his prime. He was always shot. He was already shot, given the fact that he got knocked out against Marvin Hagler in their uh, fight back in 1986, and how he got knocked out by Chase, by Terry Norris in, the, in 1989 in the first round. So, yeah, I, I could, I would agree that Mugabe was shot at the time. So, uh, yeah, but it, the point is that um, Cullen got him out of there and knocked him out in the first round. And then he continued his knockout winning streak up to 15. And one of those victims in that 15 KO win streak was against Julian Jackson. Now, if you guys don't know who Julian Jackson is, I suggest you pause this video. You take a look at his highlights and his fights. Okay. Now, Julian Jackson is ranked pound for pound number one best puncher of all time. Okay. This guy, just like Jerome McCullen, was running through everybody and was very feared as well. Okay, because Julia Jackson was calling all the middleweights out. He was calling out Roy Jones. He was calling out James Tony. He even called out Mike McCollum. 
called him out for a rematch. And McClellan was actually the first guy to knock out or stop uh, Julian Jackson when they fought at 154. And, you know, Jackson won the rematch. And, and of course, McClellan dismissed it. So it is what it is. And McClellan wants to run around talk not McClellan. McCallum, Mike McCallum. <laughs> I'm sorry, not McC- <laughs> Mike McCallum went. Now he wants to run around and talk about how uh, Leonard Hearns, Duran, and um, Hagler all ducked him. I like. Well, okay, then you know you why you should explain why did you avoid the rematch with Julian Jackson when Julian Jackson called you out. So you know it is what it is, and I like Mike McCallum, but you know I like to point out the double standard. <laughs> so, anyways. Um, Going into the Julian Jackson fight, I thought um, from what I read the bookies at the time, I think that Julian Jackson was the slight favorite to beat um, McClellan. But, I mean, it was a competitive fight, you know, when it lasted up to five rounds. And mind you, this is the first time that McClellan went past um, three rounds in such a long period of time before he fought Jackson. But when the fifth round hit, McClellan hit, a, hit Jackson with a crushing right and then he followed up with a crushing left and knocked him back, knocked him back silly. I mean, Jesus war. And honestly, I can't believe how uh, Jackson got up and would stand that. So when he got up and, you know, uh, after that, apparently Mills Lane stopped the fight because Jackson was, you know, he was terribly hurt. He was hurt bad. And McCollum uh, came in there and took his title. Then after that, he had a, uh, you know, he had two defenses against Jay Bell and Gilbert Baptist. And he ran through those guys in the first round. And then he got the rematch with Jackson and ran through him again in the first round. He didn't even go <laughs> past the first round. Knocked him out badly. I'm like, and this is one of the reasons why McClellan was feared. He was a, vo- a very avoided fighter just like Jackson. He couldn't get a big fight with all the big names. He was calling them all out, and they all avoided him. And like I mentioned, I think that's the reason why James Sony and Roy Jones Jr. moved up in weight. And I think Vinny Pazienza moved up in weight, too, just to avoid fight McClellan. So... In that process, I think McClellan, you know, no, realizing he could no longer make one, uh, 160 because, uh, as I mentioned, he was too, he was very big for middleweight. Um, he moved up in weight to 168, and his first fight was against Nigel Ben, the Dark Destroyer. Now, Nigel Ben, a high respect, one of the best British fighters of all time. And it's the life of me. I can't understand why Nigel Ben has not been inducted to the Hall of Fame. I really don't understand why. But, you know, it is what it is, and he should be uh, inducted to next year's Hall of Fame, if you ask me. But in that fight, um, it was a very, very competitive fight. It was a very, very good fight, but also one of the most forgotten fights. Um, Maybe not in the U.K. boxing scene, but more in the American boxing scene. And the reason why I say that, because that fight ended in tragedy, okay? Um... Well, before I get into that part, uh, I would like to say that um, in the first round of the fight, um, McClellan had um, Nigel Ben out of there. I mean, he knocked him out of the ring in the first round. And, you know, being Ben, the warrior that he was, he found the strength and courage to get back up and get back into the ring and, you know, continue on. But the most, uh, you know, despicable thing I ever seen a referee did do uh, was the Italian referee. I forgot his name. He literally intervened with McClellan whenever McClellan wanted to get inside and not get um, Ben out of there, knock him out completely because Ben was gone. He had no legs in that first round. But that referee gave um, gave Ben so much time to recover, and I thought that was ridiculous. I know some of my U.K. subscribers are going to uh, disagree with me on that, but if you look at that fight, that Italian referee was so incompetent that he let Ben get away with that. And honestly, I just, I, it, was just it was just despicable officiating. The fact that he allowed Ben to hit um, to uh, repeatedly rabbit punch McCullen too in the back of the head, that which could have caused help cause the brain clot. I understand that um, you know some people will argue it was the head butt that did it. Yeah, but also the repeated head rabbit punches that takes an effect too in your brain. So, uh, you know, McClellan, it was a tough fight. You know, very very rough fight. You know, Roger Ben obviously he knew he could not box McCullen, so he had to uh, take the fight to him. But it was also in the eighth round, I believe, or ninth round, when, when McClellan had been in trouble again and knocked him down. And McClellan, I mean, Ben was seriously hurt, but he found a way to get back up. And, of course, in the tenth round, that's where all the, tra- the tragedy hit. Um, McClellan couldn't really see. Um, you know, his eyes were blinking. Then he unexpectedly took a knee when 
um, Ben didn't even land a punch on him. And then he got back up. He took another knee, and you know, then he allowed the referee to count it out. And the announcers were very upset about, were very surprised about it. And then the fight ended. Then he went back to his corner, and then he collapsed. So uh, he was taken to a hospital. Found out that he has, you know, severe brain damage, left him blind, and his hearing uh, affected, whatnot. But you know, it is what it is. Let me know what you think. Care to comment, share, subscribe. Signing off. Peace.